Shalom friends, Jeremy Gimpel from the Aru Goat Farm. Last night in the most bold rescue operation in the war to date, the IDF was able to rescue two hostages from the heart of Rafah in the middle of a war zone in an urban area. How were they able to do it? The details are not yet publicized, but with tunnels and booby traps and a war zone all around them, somehow miraculously, the IDF was able to do the impossible. What I want to do though right now is I want to tell you the backstory of what happened right before this amazing rescue operation. Connect the dots and tell you something that the media will never share. Right before the rescue operation, the newly elected president of Argentina made his first trip to Israel. And for those of you that don't know, this is the most pro-Israel, pro-Jewish international leader that we have ever seen before. He says he wants to convert to Judaism when he completes his presidency. He says he's a student of the Rebbe, of the Lubavitcher Rebbe. He says he loves Israel, loves the Bible, believes in God. And when he came to Israel, it was like a media fanfare. He goes to the Western Wall and he's crying in the most heartfelt prayer we've ever seen any international leader ever pray like that. A lot of international leaders come and they'll put a little, you know, note in the wall. You see him crying for his people, crying for Israel. Everywhere he goes, people are singing and dancing. And we're looking at this charismatic leader and no one really knows what to do with it. Then in the evening, he goes to Yad Vashem, which of course represents the greatest disaster in Jewish history. And he gives a Bible teaching on prophecy of the building of the third temple in Jerusalem and the timeless tale of hope of Rabbi Akiva. Hay una profecía acerca de la destrucción que relata que un zorro irrumpiría en el lugar más santo. También hay otra profecía que relata que este mismo lugar será reconstruido. Ahora que veo con mis propios ojos cumplirse la primera profecía, me río de alegría y esperanza ya que de seguro se cumplirá la segunda profecía. And that night, two hostages were rescued. Do you know where those two hostages were from? That's right. They were from Argentina. More than that, there is an ancient text in the Talmud, Tractate Sanhedrin, page 98b, that talks about what will be the name of the man who heralds in the era of the coming of Mashiach. What will be his name? And so there are many opinions. One opinion says his name will be Shiloh. One opinion says his name will be Hanina. One says that his name will be Menachem, the one who brings comfort. The last opinion, and I'll put it up on the screen here, it says, and the rabbis say his name will be a leper from the house of the rabbi. And that's obviously the most peculiar of all names. But when you look at the Aramaic and the Hebrew, his name is Chavira, which means white. That's not really a name. And so the interpretation was, oh, it must be the white skin of a leper. So his name will be leper. But what is the name of the president of Argentina? If we look at the Hebrew letters, Javier and Javira, Javire, it's hard to not see that there is an absolute ancient parallel because the man's name is Javier Mile. And he is from the house of the Rebbe. He says he is a student of the Rebbe of the Lubavitcher Rebbe. And I tell you this because I want you to see the Yad Hashem. I want you to see the hand of God that's unfolding in Israel in this public display of the most sincere prayer at the Western Wall, at the place closest to the place that will one day be a house of prayer for all nations. On the night that this president gave a teaching on the Bible about the prophecies of the building of that third temple that will be a house of prayer for all nations. That night, two hostages were miraculously rescued from the country that he represents. That's unbelievable. And what does it mean that his name, Javier, will be the one that heralds the coming of Mashiach? It's to show us that God answers our prayers, that he is watching over Israel. He chose the people of Israel and he gave them the land of Israel. And now people around the world can open their eyes and they can choose. An attack on the people of Israel in the land of Israel is a direct attack on the God of Israel. So you can side with rapists and murderers and toddler kidnappers. We saw manifest evil on October 7th. You can stand against the good 
or you can stand with the people of God. Those are your options, and we're now being given another light to show us the way. And so, with that amazing news that two hostages were miraculously saved, I hope you have a beautiful day.